Back in 2018, I bought a Woodline sawmill. It was a model called HM126. I bought the one with an electric motor, and the reason why for that was because I wanted to have it on a fixed place in my barn. And that's because I want to avoid the gasoline pollution and noise. The unpacking was actually really pleasant. It was uh, nice packed, and as you can see, the smaller parts was nice wrapped in to protect them. To assemble the mill itself was actually also really easy. It was just to follow an instruction manual from page one. And as you can see here, I had to find a space in my barn and clean up first. So I was ready to set up my sawmill. I started by leveling out the rails um, in order to have it all straightened out. So it took some time, but it was worth it. Um, after a couple of hours, I was actually finished assembling the rest of the sawmill and it was ready to be mounted on the rails. And here you see the final result, uh, my sawmill ready for, for test. And I was really looking forward to take the first spin to see how it actually worked. But this video is more about the saw blade guide and the 2018 model is fixed. Uh, but I saw a video with the new version, 2020 version, where you have adjustable guide. And I thought, okay, it should be possible to put this guide on this one. I know I had to cut some steel, but nevertheless, I thought, okay, let's go for it. And I bought a kit. Okay, so the package arrived. And here's the content of the package. And here you can see the parts. I will try to walk through. Um, there's a safety guard here uh, that has to be mounted in the front of the blade. And this safety guard will move back and forward together with the uh, adjustable uh, blade guard. And you can see it's mounted in a kind of guard itself. Um, and then you also see here the new shaft you get. The new shaft where you have the blade guide where it will be mounted um, and you also have a new watering system you still have the hose in the back and then the water will flow out to the plate in the front and then you have the bolts and nuts for the guide itself you have the four holes where you're mounted and you have a kind of a washer that has to be between this guide and the shield of the sawmill to keep the right distance. And then of course you have a handle. I don't know what you call this, uh, I will call it a push rod where you have the guide that will be moved forward and back. So as you can see it's just to mount it via the bolt. If we take a look at the back then we can see that in the back you have uh, a little knot that goes into the small holes here and it's a, a spring, a kind of spring with a ball and uh, it's adjustable so you can tighten it more or less depending on how hard you want it to press on the, the push rod Okay, let's try to have a look at the <coughs> back of the sawmill. Uh, this mounting place here is the same as I see it on the 2020 model. And you have two screws, two bolts on one side of the tower, and you have two bolts on the other side. And it's where the main part for the adjustable saw blade guide has to be mounted. As you can see here, two bolts one side and two bolts the other side. 
So let's start by checking the alignment. And if we actually have the right position for the plate card. This is, after all, a 2018 model, but I'm still confident that it can be built on this model. So I'll take off the saw plate first, and then I'll make a quick alignment test here. <clears throat> I just use the safety screen for the blade and put on the, the new shaft so I can see the height and it seems to be okay. And then I go to the other side and then I try put in where it actually has to be uh, mounted. And as you can see, the hole for the new shaft has a correct height. And also when I take off the push rod itself, you can see here it actually fits okay. Here's the distance between the beam, main beam, and the center of the shaft for the blade card. Um, the first thing I do is, of course, take off the hose for the watering system. And then I want to take off the shaft with the plate card itself. And it's just to unscrew the screw on the side and then you can actually pull it out. So this is how it looks like. As so you can see it is a little rusty. So I think it has to go under a little maintenance before I mount it again. And here again you see where to mount the main part for the adjustable blade card. Up here you have the wire, so you can see the wire will actually keep the sawmill in place. So even though we have to unmount four bolts in the lower part of the sawmill, it doesn't matter. Everything will be in place anyway. And then it's just to unscrew the screws one by one and it does not take long so after unscrewing the four bolts it was time to mark up where we should have this little uh, bolt with the spring bowl this little bowl that has to be you can see pushed in against the push rod so it will actually keep the push rod not from moving forth and back itself. And when it has been marked where we have to have this hold, it's just to drill a sufficient size of hole. And I ended up having a hole just I think about 19 millimeters something like that and that should be sufficient so you have some space so you can um, both align it in the holes but you can also twist it a little so you have some space for that and the reason why is because it actually goes through the back plate here and as you can see here I had to use a special drill to get the full size so but in the end uh, I succeeded to make the hole and then it was next step was to try mount the part uh, putting on the four screws and then tighten it all up and in the end put in the push rod to see if it is, was aligned or it has the same height as the the original tool post as you can see here left in the picture you have to fiddle a little because you have to have this special uh, washer between the part and the back side of the sawmill But after a while it succeeds, I succeeded to do it and uh, it was just to tighten it up and it was time to put on the, the push rod 
to see if it actually aligned. Now for another check, we want to check the alignment when we have the push rod in place. And then we can see how high the hole for the new shaft is actually running in the adjustable uh, uh, plate card here. So I can see when I measure it's about 3, 4 mil below. Um, but it might be because it has not been adjusted 100%. So I make another check here to see how is the alignment uh, between where the saw blade is running. And here I can use a a tool to see how it actually level out and as you can see it level out really good so the mill is leveled out from the beginning so it seems that it is okay here you can see both holes the old one and the new one where we want to have the new adjustable guide um, and then it's time to cut some steel so I cut the steel approximately 20 millimeters over the hole so I have some space uh, for the new the new parts and it does not take that long to actually cut the steel and if it should work out like it does not work anyway. I can always weld it back. And here I file a little on the edge so it will be a little more smooth. And then it's time to make another check. And uh, now we have to align the push rod. So it will run uh, in the same pattern the same track as the saw blade itself uh, and then I have to uh, adjust it before I actually tighten up all the bolts and here I measure if there's any distance or different in the distance and yeah, it's a two three millimeters so I have to adjust it a little and that should do it so a final check to see that everything is okay. And now it's actually spot on 30 millimeters. And here I use the the new adjustable guide just to loosen the, the screw at the old shaft so I can dismantle this and um, then I put on the new shaft to see how it actually fits up and it fits okay so it's just to tighten the bolt in the top um, and as you can see it's a little rusty so I have to do some maintenance. Um, first I will uh, put in the bowl that is going to tighten up the shaft so it will not move forward and back and it's also for adjusting how tight it will run uh, on the back side of the blade. And it's time to see if I can actually take out the small blocks here and the lower block is okay but the top block is a little tree it seems that the rust has taken it so after a while I gave up and I went to my shop and did some maintenance on the head the whole head take all parts from each other and then put them together again and then I mount it in place again and uh, then I needed to tighten it up and I wanted to hold a straight line so I used my ruler here 
and, and the next thing is to look into uh, if it is actually still leveled out as it's supposed to be so I just put on again my my ruler and maybe it's a little hard to see but it's actually leveling out pretty good then we have to put on the soap blade again so we can see how it actually run in the new blade guide or the new positioned blade guide you so to speak um, and also to check how easy it is actually to mount the blade again uh, and because we don't have this safety guard in front of it with a small uh, adjustment block or a small uh, guide block in the in the bottom here it's actually pretty easy to put the blade on and align it up so and then I try to pull the blade guard forth and back a couple of times and then I adjusted the two small uh, blocks that has to be tightened around the, the blade and then I just move it forth and back and test it to see if everything was running smooth and okay and it seems to be pretty good pretty fine and then I did a test again to see if it leveled out and it did level perfect so yeah, you can see how it actually end up to be and uh, I adjusted the little spring ball I drilled a hole for earlier so I tightened it up so it was a little more tight so now it was time to put on the handle and it was also pretty straightforward nothing much complicated here just had to tighten it up to a certain amount so it was still run free and then of course when I have uh, tighten it up I checked that it actually worked and it works fine so the next step was actually now to test to see if the blade actually run through so I started it up as you can hear Then I adjust it a little, try it again. And then I took it all the way out again and tested a final time and everything went very good. So now it was time to put on the safety guard in front of the plate the yellow part you probably remember from earlier and first i figured where to put the, the guide that has to be screwed on the sawmill itself uh, you can see you have a finger nut you put on on the shaft and then you have the plastic guard that you have to uh, mount on the, your shield itself so I think to remember I actually ended up having it again with, just beside the edge as you can see and from the edge out was 15 millimeters you can see I made a quick test here to see if it actually was possible to pull it forth and back and see how much it actually uh, got off of the track and again I measure how long it should be the distance from the side 
and into the block and the measurement was about 50 millimeters I used uh, quite some time to be 100% sure where to put it. I know at the videos I saw from the 2020 sawmill, the block is actually almost beneath the, the wheel, the center of the wheel. So it has been pushed a little longer in. And then I have to tap some marks where I should drill the two new holes. And after some hammering and some measuring again I took my drilling machine and uh, drilled some holes then I filed it a little so the circle would be smooth and then I mounted the guide block for the safety guard And when it has been mounted, I just made a quick check to see if the measurement still was okay. And then I put on the finger nut. And then it was time to see if everything was running okay. So I took it all the way back or in. And as you can see in the left side here, I pushed on the safety guard and you can see it actually is a, a little tight so I took it out and I made the hole a little larger where I have the finger nut and that helped and then it was time to put on the little nut for the wiring system And after it was in place, I cut a piece of the hose. So I put a piece of the hose on this one, the little knot here. So the water was going a little away from the block itself. And then a final test to see if everything runs smoothly. And it did.
I change the old blade, <coughs> put in a new one, make some new measurements to see that all was aligned. It seems to be aligned quite okay. And then I just ran some more tests, cut some more, some more wood to see how it actually uh, coped with a new blade and it was much, much better. I tried different thickness of the boards and here was board of about one inch, 25 millimeters and here's one at a half inch or approximately 12 millimeters. I don't know why the camera is still jumping but it's not because of the saw anyway. So, And especially for this kind of cutting here yeah, it's pretty good. And that's my stockpile when I was finished cutting up all the wood. Here's the uh, top uh, view that you can see the cut. Cut is great. And some final pictures from the result and I'm pretty pleased. I'm really glad I did this investment. Uh, I will never regret that, that's for sure. And here you see some of the leftovers from the rebuild. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.